Keeper 5.7 Polar Coordinates. All right, so the first thing we need to know how to do is to convert polars to Cartesian. And so we need to understand that X equals R cosine theta and Y equals R sine theta. That's our general form for our um, polar to Cartesian conversion. Um, some other conversion formulas that we need to know. So conver converting from Cartesian to polar or polar to Cartesian, we need to know that R squared equals X squared plus Y squared or R equals the square root of X squared plus Y squared. And theta is tan inverse of Y over X. All right, in example one, we need to convert negative four 2 pi over 3 to Cartesian. So in other words, they're giving us the polars and we want to convert it back to a rectangular. And so in this case, we know that r equals negative 4. And we know that theta equals 2 pi over 3. And we also know that we have a formula for x. So remember that x equals r cosine theta or and y equals r sine theta. Um, so in this problem, x is going to be negative 4 cosine of 2 pi over 3. Um, which using the unit circle, I know cosine of two power of three is negative one half. So we have negative four times negative one half, which is two. So X equals two and Y equals negative four sine two power of three or negative four times root three over two or negative two root three. This tells us that our point in rectangular would be two comma negative two root three. Example two, we want to convert negative one, one to polar coordinates. So negative one, one is the rectangular. And so I know that R equals the square root of X squared plus Y squared, or in this case, the square root of negative one squared plus one squared, or R equals the square root of two. I also know that theta or the reference angle for theta is going to be 10 inverse of Y over X, which should be 10 inverse of negative one over one. Well, 10 equals negative one at negative pi over four. Now understand that that's the reference angle. I need to make sure that I get the correct angle for the correct coordinate. So if my coordinate is at negative one, one, that is the second quadrant. So in order to figure out my actual angle, I'm gonna do pi minus one fourth to get into the second quadrant to get an angle of three pi over four. In other words, theta is three pi over four. So my polar coordinate would become root two comma three pi over four. So the catch to this or the trickiest part of this is just making sure that that theta falls in the proper coordinate that represents the rectangle coordinate that we're looking for. All right, so next we have um, an equation that we wanna to convert to polar. So we have a rectangular equation of two X minus five X cubed equals one plus X Y. That's rectangular and we wanna take it to polar. So again, remember that X equals R cosine theta and, R, and Y equals R sine theta. And so if I plug those into my function, I get that 2x minus 5x cubed equals 1 plus xy is the same thing as 2r cosine theta minus 5r cosine theta cubed, um, which equals 1 plus r cosine theta times r sine theta. Um, this is a really nasty looking equation, so I'm just going to clean it up just a little bit. And I'm going to get 2r cosine theta minus 5r cubed cosine cubed theta equals 1 plus r squared cosine theta sine theta. Now, generally, we would try to get this to be r equals, but because um, the equation is so um, nasty and we have so many r's every place, we would probably just leave it as it is. Example four, it says convert r equals negative eight cosine theta to Cartesian. So one of the tricks that we can use is to multiply the entire equation by r. And so if I do that, I get r squared equals negative eight r cosine theta. Uh, remember that uh, r squared equals x squared plus y squared. And also remember that x equals r cosine theta. So when I convert this, I'm going to use substitution of what I know. And so instead of r squared, I'm going to do x squared plus y squared. And instead of negative 8r cosine, I'm just going to say negative 8x. Um, so rewriting this, again, I don't have to, but to make it a little bit better so I can actually know what kind of function it is, I'm going to rewrite it by... Um, subtracting y squared on both sides and adding the 8x. Um, then I'm going to go ahead and complete the square. So remember when you complete the square, you take the 8, you divide it by 2, and you square it. That's how I get 16. I'm going to add 16, but I also have to subtract 16 um, because I want to keep the equation balanced. 
Um, so then I'm going to factor. So I have negative y squared equals x plus 4 squared minus 16. Or I get y squared equals 16 minus, um, 16 minus x plus 4 squared. If I bring the x plus 4 squared back to the other side, I get x plus 4 squared plus y squared equals 16. This tells me that I have a circle centered at negative 4, 0 with the radius of 4. All right, so the next thing we want to talk about is polar graphs. Um, you want to be familiar with the form of your polar graphs. So when you're looking at this chart or when you're writing down this chart, you want to recognize things like when you have r equals a number, that's just going to be a circle. Or r equals a sine theta, r equals a cosine theta. Those are all just circles oriented on different axes. Um, so again, when you're writing this out, kind of keep in mind what you're looking for. For instance, when I'm looking at a limousine, I know I have a number plus a number or a number minus a number sine or cosine. Um, we have roses. They have a form of a sine in theta or a cosine in theta. And then we have luminous gates, which look like infinity symbols. And that's where you have like r squared, a squared sine 2 theta or a squared cosine 2 theta. All right, so for this first example, we're going to graph a couple of these. Um, equations and I'm going to graph them all in one plane just to make my life a little bit easier but the first one we have theta equals pi over 4 or 3 pi over 4 and so we need to understand that anytime you have theta equals a number it's just going to be a line and in this case we're doing the line at 3 pi over 4 that line is going through um, like y equals negative x the second one part b says r cosine theta equals 4, we also need to understand that that form r cosine equals um, a number is just, again, a vertical line since r cosine theta equals x. So this is really x equals 4. And then the last one would be the same thing, but instead of x, it's going to be y since it's r sine theta. So we have y equals negative 3. So if I graph it, the red graph that you see, theta equals 3 pi over 4, again, that's just a line through y equals negative x. The green line is r cosine theta equals 4, that's x equals 4. And then the blue line is r sine theta equals negative 3, or y equals negative 3. All right, so again, another example, um, we want to graph r equals 7, r equals 4 cosine theta, and r equals negative 7 sine theta. Again, for me, I'm going to graph it on the same plane. You don't have to. Um, but again, when I look at this, I want to notice, I want to recognize the different forms. So again, if I have r equals a number, um, that's just a circle with a radius of 7 centered at the origin. Or if I have r equals 4 cosine theta, that's a circle that lies um, on the positive x-axis with a radius of 2. And then um, if I have r equals negative sine theta, that's just going to be a circle with a radius of negative 7 halves lying on the negative y-axis. So again, the red graph would be part a or r equals 7. Um, the blue graph would be r equals 4 cosine theta, and you see it's centered, um, well, it's on the positive x-axis with the radius of 2. And then the green one would be um, r equals negative 7 sine theta, um, and you see it's on the negative y-axis with the radius of 7 halves. All right, so the next example, we're graphing r equals 5 minus 5 sine theta r equals 7 minus 6 cosine theta, and r equals 2 plus 4 cosine theta. The first one, I know since a and b are the same number, I know it's a cardioid, and I know it's lying on the negative y-axis since sine is negative. And I know that distance from the pole is 0 since 5 minus 5 is 0, and the maximum distance from the pole is 10 since 5 plus 5 is 10. Remember, the pole is just your origin. All right, and so here's our graph of our cardioid. Um, we call it a cardioid because it kind of looks like a heart. All right, part B, we have R equals 7 minus 6 cosine theta. Since A is greater than B, I know I have a limousine with no loop. Um, it's going to lie on the negative x-axis since it's negative cosine. And I know that the maximum distance from the pole is going to be 7 plus 6, which is 13. I also know that the part that bumps out for this is going to be 1 because 7 minus 6 is 1. So when I look at the graph of this, again, I have um, a limousine that's lying on that negative x-axis. I have a little bump out at 1. My maximum distance is 13. Um, and I can also figure out that my um, y-intercepts are going to be 7 because of that 7 in the front of my function. 
All right, so the last one, we have 2 plus 4 cosine theta. Here we have that A is less than B, which tells me I'm going to have a limit sum. This time I'm going to have a loop in it. It's going to be on the positive x-axis because cosine is positive. And then I'm going to have a maximum distance of 6 because I have 2 plus 4 is 6. And I also know that the length of my loop is going to be 2 because 2 minus 4 is 2. And so here we see the graph. Again, positive, um, positive x-axis, distance of 6 away. We see the loop of 2. And I can also tell my y-intercepts of 2 and negative 2 because of the first number in my equation.